So we're on to the Dynamo DB cheat sheet, and this one's more special than all the rest, and that's why I prefixed it with Ultimate, because Dynamo DB is the most important service you need to know to pass the AWS Certified Developer Associate. It's extremely critical to the certification, and this uh, cheat sheet is very long, okay? It's the longest one in this course. It's seven pages long, and it actually started out as only being five pages. I had published a preview on Twitter, and uh, Kirk, who is a senior technologist uh, at, at AWS, specifically for DynamoDB, noticed I made some mistakes and uh, made the offer to review the entire cheat sheet for accuracy. And I, I sent it over to him and he turned this five page cheat sheet into a seven page cheat sheet. And I even learned a lot of great things. So, you know, I think we all benefit from Kirk's help here. And so I wanna tell you, if, if you can do me a favor, to go on Twitter, if you have Twitter, I want you to tweet out to him, AWS Certified DynamoDB, and thank him. Thank him for helping us with this ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet. He did it on his own time. He didn't have to do it, uh, you know, and this was his own effort. So we greatly appreciate it. And, you know, I really hope that it helps you pass the exam. So let's jump into this ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet. Okay, so let's jump into the ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet. So DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL key value document database. DynamoDB is suited for workloads with any amounts of data that require predictable read and write performance and automatic scaling from small to large and everything in between. DynamoDB scales up and down to support whatever read and write capacity you specify per second in provisioned capacity mode, or you can set it to on-demand mode and there is little to no capacity planning. DynamoDB can be set to support eventually consistent reads by default and strongly consistent reads on a per call basis. Eventually consistent reads data is returned immediately, but data can be inconsistent. Copies of data will be generally consistent in one second. Now talking about strongly consistent reads, uh, will always read from the leader partition since it always has to be has to have an up-to-date copy. Data will never be, con uh, be inconsistent, but latency may be higher. Copies of data will be consistent with a guarantee of one second. DynamoDB uh, stores three copies of data on SSD drives across three AZs in a region. I think before I had said across three regions, but this was my misinterpretation of the documentation. And I don't even know if it's really three AZs, more so managed data centers by AWS, but it's easy to understand them as AZs, so that's what we're gonna call them. DynamoDB's most common data types are B, binary, N, number, S, string. I think there's a few other ones there, and some of them share the word, uh, like start with B, so it gets a bit confusing, but these are the three that I want you to know. Tables consist of items, which we call rows, and items consist of attributes, which we call columns. Uh, a partition is when DynamoDB slices your table up into smaller chunks of data. This speeds up read for very large tables. DynamoDB automatically creates partitions for these scenarios. So every 10 gigabytes of data, when you exceed uh, RCUs of 3000 or, or uh, WCUs of 1000 limits for a single partition, uh, in the last scenario, when DynamoDB sees a pattern uh, uh, of a hot partition, it will split that partition in an attempt to fix the issue. So that is page one. We're going to go to page two. So we're on to page two of the ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet. So DynamoDB will uh, try to evenly split the RCUs and WCUs across partitions. Primary keys define where and how your data will be stored in partitions. So primary keys come in two types. We have simple primary keys using only a partition key and composite primary key using both a partition and sort key. Partition key is also known as hash and sort key is also known as range. I mentioned this before, but the reason they used to be called hash and range, I don't know, but the point is they changed them. And when you're using the CLI or, uh, or the SDK, they still call them hash and range. So it's important to know uh, both of them there. When creating a simple primary key, the partition key value must be unique. When creating a composite primary key, the combined partition and sort key must be unique. When using sort key records on the partition are logically grouped together in ascending order, uh, DynamoDB global tables provide a fully managed solution for deploying multi-region, multi-master databases. DynamoDB supports transactions via the transact write items and transact get items API calls. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it there, but the point of these transaction calls is that they let you go across uh, multiple tables. Oh, I write it right here. So transactions let you query multiple tables at once in an all or nothing approach. So all API, API calls must succeed. 
DynamoDB streams allow you to set up a Lambda function triggered every time uh, data is modified in a table to react uh, to changes. And I love DynamoDB streams. I use it all the time for a lot of projects. Uh, I don't feel like we need to know too much on the developer about it, uh, but uh, there's definitely a lot we could write about it. And streams do not consume RCUs. So that is the nice thing about it. Uh, they're not going to use your read count up. So that is page two. We're moving on to page three. So we're on to uh, page three of the ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet. So DynamoDB has two types of indexes. We first have LSIs, which is local secondary index. And then we'll talk about GSIs. So LSIs support strongly or eventually consistent reads. Uh, they can only be created with the initial table. They cannot be modified and cannot be deleted unless you're also deleting the table. Uh, that's the only case where you'd be able to delete it. Uh, they only use composite keys. Uh, you, they have to be 10 gigabytes or less per partition. The shared capacity units with, uh, they have to share the capacity units with the base table. Uh, you must share a partition key uh, with the base table. So that's very important as well. Uh, moving on to GSI. So global secondary index, uh, they cannot provide strong consistency. The only way you can get strong consistency is with LSIs, okay? Very important to remember that point. So only eventual consistent reads can create, modify, or delete at any time. That's extremely convenient. Simple and composite uh, keys is what you can use here. Uh, can have whatever attributes. Uh, uh, um, so the partition key can be whatever it wants and the sort key can be whatever it wants. There is no size restric restrictions per partition. It has its own capacity settings. So there you go. That is, um, I think we're page three, on to page four. So we're on to page four of the ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet. So we'll talk about scans and we'll talk about queries. The first thing I want you to tell about uh, scans is your table should be designed in such a way that your workload primary access patterns do not use scans. Overall scans should be needed sparingly in frequent reports. So generally you do not want to be using scans. Scan through all items in a table and then return uh, one, uh, one or more items through filters. Uh, by default returns all attributes for every item you can use per uh, project expression to limit the attributes that you want to use. Scans are sequential. You can speed up a scan through parallel scans using segments and total segments. Scans uh, can be slow, especially with uh, very large tables and can easily consume your provisioned throughput. Scans are one of the most expensive ways to access data in DynamoDB. And we'll move on to queries next. So it's about finding items based on the primary key values. Tables must have a composite key in, in order to be able to query. By default, queries are eventually consistent, but if you want to use uh, strong, uh, strongly consistent reads, you can uh, use uh, this attribute strongly uh, consistent reads, set it to true, and now you're doing strong. By default, returns all attributes for each item found by query. So just like scans, you can use project expression to filter stuff out. By default, is sorted ascending, and you can use scan index forward uh, false to reverse the order in descending. I don't know if that option is available in scan, but you know, just know that scan index forward is used to flip the order. So there you go. So we're on to the fifth page out of seven for the ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet. So DynamoDB has two capacity modes, provision and on demand. We're talking about provision first. So you can switch between these modes once every 24 hours. Provision throughput capacity is the maximum amount of capacity your application is allowed to read or write per second from a table or index. So provision is suited for predictable or steady state workloads. Uh, it's very important to understand the concepts of RCUs and WCUs, especially for provision throughput, because you definitely set these values here. So RCUs is a read capacity unit, WCUs is write capacity unit. Uh, and with dyno and with provision throughput, you can set auto scaling. And so it's recommended you enable auto scaling with provision capacity mode. In this mode, you set a floor and a ceiling for the capacity you wish the table to support. DynamoDB will automatically add and remove capacity uh, uh, to between these values on behalf and throttle calls that go above the ceiling for too long. And if you go beyond your provision capacity, you'll get an exception, provision throughput exceeded exception. For the exam, you 100% want to know this. It will absolutely show up on the exam. And this is what happens when throttling occurs. And if you're not familiar with throttling, it's when requests are blocked due to read or write frequencies higher than the set threshold. So an example for exceeding uh, the set provision capacity, we've got partition splitting, table index capacity mismatch. So uh, that is provision throughput. We're going to move on to on demand and on to the next page we go. So we're on to the sixth page of the ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet talking about on-demand capacity. And this is pay per request. So you only pay for what you use. 
On demand is suited for new or unpredictable workloads. The throughput is only limited by the default alt upper limit of the tables. That's 40K RCUs and 40K WCs. WCUs, that's extremely high value. And throttling can occur if you exceed double your previous peak capacity. So the high uh, watermark within 30 minutes, had no idea of this. Uh, if you previously peaked to a maximum of 30,000 ops per second, you could not peak immediately at 90,000 ops per second, but you could at 60,000 ops per second. So that is uh, definitely something I did not know. And I'm really glad Kirk put that in there because I had something way more simpler uh, before. Uh, since there is no hard limit on on-demand, it could be very expensive based on emerging scenarios. So just be careful with on-demand there. Uh, but you definitely have the flex flexibility where you don't have to think about um, setting your capacity. So that's really nice. Now let's talk about calculating reads and writes. Um, this is definitely more important for uh, provisioned uh, uh, throughput, not for on-demand on capacity, but we'll go through it now. So for ca uh, calculating reads for RCUs, a read capacity unit represents one strongly consistent reads per second or two eventually consistent reads per second for an item up to four kilobytes in size. And how you're gonna calculate RCUs for strong is the following. Round up data to the nearest four, divide data by four, times by numbers of uh, numbers of reads, and then we'll move on to how to calculate for RCUs for eventual. So round uh, data up to the nearest four, divide by four, times uh, by the number of reads, and divide uh, final number by two, and I think you gotta round it up, and then round up the uh, nearest whole number. If you really can't remember that stuff, here are the examples, and I'm hoping you're printing out this cheat sheet on the day of your exam so that you can look through these and make sure you know these for sure. And so that's page six, and we're on to the last page, page seven. So we're on to the last page of the ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet. So let's finish strong here. We're gonna do some calculating of writes. So our write capacity unit represents one write per second for an item up to one kilobyte. How to calculate writes? Uh, what we're gonna do is round data up to the nearest one uh, and times by the number of writes. Uh, we'll talk about, uh, we'll, I have the example there. We'll just show you there at the end though. Uh, so we'll talk about DynamoDB Accelerator, also known as DAX. It's a fully managed in-memory write through uh, cache for DynamoDB that runs in a cluster. So reads are eventually consistent. Incoming requests are evenly distributed across all of the nodes in the cluster. DAX can reduce read response times to microseconds. And let's talk about where it's ideal and where it's not. And this is definitely debatable, but I got this from the doc. So, you know, you can't argue with me, but I know some people might consider otherwise. And if it's for the exam, they generally follow what's ever on the docs until they've been changed. So uh, I, DAX is ideal for the fastest response times possible. Apps that uh, have apps that read a small number of items more frequently. Apps that are read intensive. So that's the one I'm highlighting there. And then DAX is not ideal for apps that require strongly consistent reads. Apps that do not require microsecond read uh, response times. Apps that are write intensive or uh, that do not perform uh, much read activity. And if you don't need DAX, consider using Elastic Cache. Um, that's not a hard rule, but that's a good rule for the exam. If you ha if you get a throw up, uh, a, a, a throw up, a toss up between uh, DAX and Elastic Cache, uh, and it doesn't need micros uh, microseconds, then you know consider using Elastic Cache there, or if it's more write intensive. Uh, and just to show you there, these are the examples. You definitely want to print out this cheat sheet and have it on exam day. You know, and I hope this this ultimate DynamoDB cheat sheet really makes the difference for your uh, exam. So it looks like I lied, and there's actually eight pages to this DynamoDB cheat sheet. I almost forgot to include uh, DynamoDB API commands, which you use via the CLI, which is really important because these could show up on the exam. So let's go through them. The first being get item. This returns a set of attributes for the items with the given primary key. If no matching item, then it does not return any data and there will be no item element in the response. Then you have put item, creates a new item or replaces an old item with a new item. If an item has the same prim primary key as the new item already exists in the specified table, the new item completely replaces the existing item. Then you have update item, edit an existing item's attributes or adds a new item to the table if it does not already exist. Then you have batch get item. This returns the attributes of one or more items from one or more uh, tables. You identify requested items by, pr uh, by primary key. A single operation can retrieve up to 16 megabytes of data, which can contain as many as 100 items. Then you have batch write item, puts or deletes multiple items in one or more tables. 
can write up to 16 uh, megabytes of data, which uh, can be compromised, which can compromise as many as 25 put or delete requests. Individual items to be written can be as large as 400 kilobytes. Then you have create table, just as the name implies, it adds a new table to your account. Table names must be unique within each region. So you could have um, the same database name, or sorry, sorry, same table name, but in two different regions. Then you have update table, so modifies the provision throughput settings, global secondary indexes, or DynamoDB stream settings for a given table. Delete table, and this is very obvious, it just deletes a table with all of its items. Then you have transact get items, a synchronous operation that atomically retrieves multiple items from one or more tables, but not from indexes in a single account and region. Can contain up to 25 objects. The aggregate size of the items in the transaction cannot exceed four megabytes. Then we have transact write items, a synchronous write operation that groups up to 25 action requests. These actions can target items in different tables, but not in different AWS accounts or regions, and no two action can target the same items. <laughs> We're really running out of space here, but we have query, finds item based on primary key values. You can create table or secondary index that has a composite primary key. And the last is scan, returns one or more items and uh, uh, more items and item attributes by accessing every item in a table or secondary index. So there you go, that's the real end to the DynamoDB cheat sheet. Super long section, but definitely worth it and super critical to passing the developer associate exam.